Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 22437, the Demon Dogs. They're currently ranked 10th in the world by OPR, 5th by non-penalty in Teleop, and they just have really, really excellent shooting on the move, super, super fast, a fantastic sorting mechanism, and a very consistent intake. I can't wait to jump into all of this on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. All right, guys, so first question I have for you is actually starting with the drivetrain, the bumpers. Is that something you guys do every year or was that more like this season specific? Uh, this season, due to defense being a more important part of this year's game, we decided to create uh, these bumpers. And this has not been a thing that we do every year. It's a thing that we just started doing this year. And as you can see, we have the sponsors on the back and our numbers on the sides. Awesome. Now, jumping right into the intake, I see you guys are, uh, you know, you guys are mixing and matching a bunch of different, uh, you know, wheels and spinners. So first start off by just showing me what you guys have, like what are the different types of wheels and spinners you have on the intake? Yeah, so on the intake, we have 48 millimeter gecko wheels. Um, we also put cat's tongue grip tape in the front of it so we could grip the artifacts better. In addition, we mixed it with uh, intake spokes and we added surgical tubing so it could help guide the artifacts into the middle. Awesome. And uh, can we just see a quick intake cycle, uh, you know, before we jump into more questions about it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so that's just like really smooth. Uh, and if we can also see how that funneling works, you know, from the sides, that would be really great to put, put an artifact at the edge and then see, yes. see it just, you know, kind of roll right into the intake. That would be great. Awesome. So a couple questions there. I see you guys have these like metal ramps kind of going up. Uh, is that something you've had the entire season or was that something you added like after some iterations? Yeah, so we had that ramp, um, metal ramp on the robot just to help it funnel up into our shooter. So it's a thing that we've done throughout the entire season. Mm -hmm. And as far as, uh, you know, these like different spokes and adding the cap tongue tape and all of these things, uh, were they all done from the beginning or were there like specific instances that you noticed each one help with? So uh, initially we did not have it. So we only had uh, the gecko wheels. So uh, when we tested, we saw that it wasn't being effective when it was intaking the balls. So we added um, the surgical tubing and the cat tongue tape onto the gecko wheel for more efficiency when intaking in the field. I see. Uh, as far as like speeds and ratios go, is it powered just by one motor? And if so, what RPM and what's the final RPM as well? Yeah, so all of this is powered by one motor, uh, 1150 motor, and it's all belted through like this series of belts. Okay, got it. And so you have uh, an additional stage inside. Can, I, can you talk to me about what's going on there and how you use it? Yeah, so, Inside our robot, we have uh, a kicker design. So it's basically the bottom part is a, sur a surgical tube kicker that pushes it up into the ramp. And then in the top part, we made a TPU star that kicks the ball into our indexer and into our shooter. I see. So the idea is that this is constantly running, but you have to intentionally feed the artifacts up. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got it. Now, talking a little bit about the sorting mechanism, walk me through what's going on and why you decided to go with this type of design. Okay, so for this year's uh, season, we decided to do the motif pattern. So one way is uh, we have a linear indexer, which um, is has a chamber and a linear guide rail. And this chamber extends out when initiated to um, that holds a ball and then it allows other balls to pass through um, giving us the advantage of uh, sorting for the motif pattern. And all of this is run by uh, servo string. 
Okay, talking about speeds a little bit, you know, like, especially with in Decode, the cycles have to be so quickly. How fast are you able to sort between artifacts? And like, what is the difference in cycle time when you're just shooting three artifacts normally and when you have to sort them intentionally? Um, yeah, so we primarily use it for autonomous and... Oh, sorry, okay. Yeah, we use this for autonomous and it takes approximately like, like five or like four seconds to sort, like all of it. Mm -hmm. Um... We don't really use an Intelliop though. Okay, I see. And as far as shooting time is concerned, you know, I feel like you guys have a very optimized uh, pass through like design. So how fast are you able to shoot during Teleop? Um, so during Teleop, we could around shoot, I think all three balls in a second. Yeah, one or two seconds mm -hmm. because uh, the indexer is inside and it's not a spin dexter, so it's just a whole direct path so it's around one to two seconds for all three balls awesome now one one topic i'm really excited to discuss with you guys is shooting on the move so you know this is something we've seen a few teams try throughout the season and you guys have implemented it uh, yourselves as well so walk me through at a high level how you implemented it and then we'll jump into the details okay so basically right um we first have our first uh regression table for um our velocity so when we're standing still we have a like a map for it then we use the pinpoint pinpoint velocities uh, to sort of graph how much it changes through uh, you know moving, and we sort of compensate that by turning that into a you know a target. Okay, so uh, starting you know just with like aiming for the turret, are you adjusting the turret aim based on how fast the robot is moving, or are you just always aiming towards the center of the goal? Yeah, so we just we use our odometry to, uh, you know, to aim. So essentially, yeah, we we do um, sort of compensate for motion okay. by adding a little bit of target. Mm -hmm. And as far as like creating these regression equations is concerned, how much data did you have to collect for this? Like, at what at what point did it get reliable? Was it like thirty shots, fifty shots, more or less? Uh, essentially, how we did it, we recorded our distance, and we sort of just kept putting in numbers to see what worked consistently. And I guess it took around like, I say a hundred shots to make sure it's very consistent. Okay, okay. And as far as like, uh, you know, locations around the field, is this? Are you able to do the shooting while moving both, uh, you know, near goal and far and like near launch zone, far launch zone, or is it really only around the goal area? It's really only around the goal area. Um, mm -hmm. For far zone, we decided to be more precise with that. Okay. I see. And are you adjusting your hood angle during this as well, or is it only shooter RPM? No, yes. Yeah, so we adjust our, our far angle depending on our, our like close position and our mid position and our far position. Usually it's okay. for a close, it's like down here, mm -hmm. far it's up here. I see. I see. Very cool. Uh, now, talking a little bit about sorting algorithms and how you're doing that uh, during autonomous, can you walk us through the logic there um, and you know what rookie teams can learn from you guys on what sensors you've used and things like that for implementing this effectively? Sure. Um, so essentially, right, we use the color sensor that was it's right here. Um, we also found out that um, most of the mo motifs are pre-placed. So we, we essentially just, you know, sometimes depending on the, on the pattern, we just uh, go up right there and we don't even sort it, we just sort right through it. Um, but when sorting, we use a color sensor and it just, uh, what's it called? And using the axon encoders, we sort of just check the position at all times, make sure nothing gets stuck. Mm -hmm. And I see you guys have another uh, servo. You have two, servo, two servos, I see one at the bottom of the robot, but then one on the left side of the artifact. What does each of them do? Right, so this one pulls the, the chamber out. Mm -hmm. This one sort of holds the ball. And this one, if, in case, uh, what's it called? Another ball comes through and we don't want to like, sort of uh, interfere with that, our sorting, we push this ball through and it, and it doesn't allow it to pass through. I see, I see. Okay, very cool. Now, uh, as, as far as sensors are concerned in intaking, do you guys have additional sensors to know when you've collected all three artifacts or is that uh, is that not needed at this time? Um, for right now, it's not needed, but we do have this uh, servo stopper right here. So that sort of just like, you know, c c controls the ball's movements. I see. And uh, la another question I have is regarding the turret. So I see you guys are using a motor-based turret. A lot of teams we've seen are going with the servos. Why use the motors? 
Um, so we used the motor because we want it to be quick and efficient as well as having enough torque to push around the shooter. So we decided to opt in for a motor turret. Okay, as, as far as RPMs are concerned, is that like a 60 RPM motor? How fast are you running that? Okay, so um, we run a 435 RPM motor and for our ratio, we have a 28 to a 110 um, on the tur turret. And I think that gives around a 110 RPM. Okay, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. And with the, with the PID tuning here, are you able to run this turret at like full speed or is it really kind of slowed down a little bit um, to, to keep it smooth? Um, we sort of just slow it down a little bit just in case because our wiring right now isn't very great, but we make sure we have hard stops or and the uh, code limitations so our wires don't get pulled out. I see. And as far as zeroing the turret goes, how do you do that at the beginning of each match? Um, so we first we have to uh, run Auton to zero our turret and then it's sort of just um, we use a static variable to track our uh, turret position using the motor encoder. And how do you zero it in autonomous? Uh, right now we're using the uh, built-in encoder, but we sort of just make sure it's at a current position, like a correct position, straight. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And are you guys using the limelight at all, like integrated with these things, or what is the limelight for? Yes, actually, we, we do use limelight um, to sort of, in case our geometry does fail, we we have a, um, a reset on our limelight just to uh, make sure everything's correct. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's fantastic. Now, the, the last question I have for you guys is regarding Teleop Performance. You're currently ranked fifth in the world by Teleop Performance, so that's incredible. You've also gone undefeated this whole season. What can teams learn from you guys as far as practice and developing consistency is concerned throughout matches? So whenever we're doing Teleop, um, one thing, uh, we actually rev up the shooter before we go into the zone. So that get, kind of gives us a, the advantage when going into the zone, we can instantly intake the balls into our, into our shooter. Also um, for defense, um, whenever defense is being played, we mostly ignore the, the zones where penalties can be farmed. And uh, overall, we just uh, continuously intake while um, collecting the balls and shooting it while in this zone. So we don't waste any time grabbing all three, waiting for the shooter to rev up and shoot all the balls. That makes a lot of sense. And you know, on that topic, when it comes for when it comes to gate cycling, how do you guys decide when to open the gate to collect more artifacts? Is it just whenever there's nine? Do you like to do it intermittently? Walk me through that. Uh, most of the time, um, I'm the coach. Most of the time I check to see if our alliance and ourselves, if we have artifacts in our robot and ready to shoot. And if we have more, if we have enough where there would be some overflow artifacts, I, I make sure that we go reset to allow for maximum amount of points. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, Demon Dogs, thank you guys so much. You know, you have a very uh, effective, very direct robot. I really like the pass through, the turret shooting on the move, all of these things you guys have implemented really, really well. So I can't wait to see how you guys progress throughout the rest of the season. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and this is Team 22437 Demon Dogs. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com robots.